Why is Nelson facing the wrong way? Because he's in a grumpy mood. No, I'm not. What happened? Nelson wanted to tell you a story, but we said he couldn't. Why? Because it's got football in it, and we told him you didn't like football. Oh, I don't mind football. See? Really? Really. Well, in that case, I suppose if Nelson still wants to tell his story... Nelson? Yes? I'd like to hear your story. Are you sure? Yes. Come on, don't be such an old sulky trunk. Come on, Nelson! Very well, then. If we're all agreed. Yes! yes. This is the story of the puffins from Mossy Bay. It was a lovely morning in Mossy Bay, and for once, Hercule Moustache was feeling happy. Ah, on a day like today, Hercule, there is no more a perfect spot than Mossy Bay. So peaceful. What is this? <laughs> Very brave. Everyone knew how grumpy Hercule Moustache could be. <coughs> oui? Uh, can I help you? Uh, we're very sorry, Mr. Uh, sir. Can we have our ball back, please? Is this your ball? Uh -huh. The one that struck me on the head? <coughs> it was an accident. <coughs> oh, an accident. Mais oui. Like the noise you make outside of my house. Like disturbing all the neighborhood. And then, poof, you kick the ball against my head in my own garden. Sorry. I will keep the ball for now. Good day. <laughs> they don't raise the sound. They make all the noise. All the, <laughs> the puffins were feeling sad. How could they play without their ball? Then Jamie spotted Thelma the whale. Hey, look. Thelma's got a ball. Mrs. Mrs. Whale, whale, can we borrow your ball, please? <coughs> Thanks. We'll look after it. Oh, my God. Oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. go on. Oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. oh, oh. He must score, surely. Thomas. It wasn't me. It was the rock. Well, we'll have to get this ball back. We promised Thelma we'd look after it. Someone will have to go into Hercule's cave. No way! Oh, you're the quickest, Jamie. You'll be in and out without him even knowing. You've got to do it, Jamie. We'll let you play up front. Good boy! Go, Jamie! That is not your ball, and this is private property. I, uh, oh. Follow me, little puffin. for football, a game you have been trying to play with very little success. You? You used to play football? Don't know, sound so amazed. I was the best guardian of the goals in the region. 
Gorgeon of the Ghouls? Goalkeeper. I was a goalkeeper. I'm a centre forward. You are hopeless. You never pass the ball. What you need is someone to train this terrible team of yours. A trainer? But who would train us? Uh, I'm now retired, of course, and very busy, uh, but perhaps... Oh, I don't think we're really... You would like your ball back? Um, I don't suppose you'd like to be our new trainer, Mr. Moustache? But Hercule was a very tough trainer. <laughs> I thought we were supposed to be playing football. I am the trainer here. Keep jumping. This is crazy. Hercule was delighted. His plan was working. Today, we play our first football match. Where's the other team? It's Jack Big Claw! <coughs> the Rock Pool Crabs? Are they really good? May we? Yes, I am sure that we will lose the game by many goals, but we have to start somewhere. Good luck to you all. The Puffins were determined to win the match just to prove Hercule wrong. OK, let's go. Jamie, you play centre forward. Strain forever. One minute left. No, no, this is the other way. To celebrate? We won the game! By only one goal against a team of crabs! <laughs> Poof! <laughs> one goal? That's because you are not fit yet! In my day, I would train all night! Yes, and then all day! No, I don't think she'd enjoy that at all. But it's funny! I prefer the one about the day that Doris the Duck... No, no, I, I think we should have a story about Zed the Zebra. <clears throat> How about that time when he lost his stripes and... Uh... <clears throat> hello! Oh, hello, Lucy. You haven't been standing there long, have you? No. Uh, what are you doing? We're trying to decide which story to tell you. But it's not easy. We all have different ideas. I'm sure they'd all be good stories. I always like your stories. Which story do you like, Boris? Me? Yes. You look like a bear who knows a good story when he hears one. I like them all, but um, my favourite is Molly's story about Doris and the Dawn Chorus. Oh, how kind of you, Boris. Will you tell us your story, Molly? 
course, if we're all agreed. <laughs> then I'll begin. Every morning, when the sun rose over the savannah, each of the animals greeted the new day in their own special way. Toot, toot. Morning, Doris. Lovely day. Morning. Toot, 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 All over the savannah, animals were joining in the dawn chorus. It was getting noisier and noisier. Pizza, 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 pizza. Hello, Doris. We're playing our favourite game. Silly faces! faces. Uh -huh. What's the matter, Doris? It's the noise. What noise? You know, the dawn chorus. It sounds terrible. Does it? Everyone sings a different song. It's just dreadful. Why don't you make up a new song, Doris? After all, you're very clever. Oh, yes. <laughs> That's right, I am. Very, very clever, aren't I? I'll be back in a minute. Me first. Uh... <laughs> that was a good one. Look at this. Doris the Duck decided to make up a song of her own. Hmm. Let me see now. What rhymes with quack? Ah, I've got it. Quack. I'm a duck. Quack. Quack, 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 quack. I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. That's a nice song, Doris. Oh, it is, isn't it? I wrote it myself, you know. It's very cute. Sing it again. I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quackety quack. That was great. Very nice indeed. I know. Why don't we all sing the same song together every morning? The animals agreed. It sounded like a good idea. That settles it. My song it is, then. The next morning, the animals met Doris at the edge of the jungle for rehearsals. Animals, birds... And insects, welcome to the first performance of the new Dawn Chorus. May I present your conductor for this morning's concert, Doris the Duck? <laughs> right then, after three, one, two. Um, excuse me, Doris. Yes? Don't you think we should all warm up first? Warm up? Like this. Do we me for so lot it all? Yeah, okay, okay, enough of that. Everybody after me. Quack. <laughs> Come on then. What are you waiting for? After me. One, two, three, four. <laughs> quack, quack. Come on, come on, it's not that hard. Listen. Quack. Quack. Brilliant. Now just join in after me. In your own time, Herbert. I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. 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 I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. Not bad. Not bad for the first time. That wasn't bad at all. I disagree. 
disagree. The song doesn't sound right. Not sound right? What do you mean the song doesn't sound right? Well, we're not all ducks like you and... Not ducks? Quack, quack! This is a quacking song, so we will all quack. Even you, Mr. Not a Duck. <laughs> I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. I'm a duck. Quack, quack. Louder, Ronald, louder. I have to go and bash a boulder. I'd better help you. The animals didn't enjoy singing the quacking song. One by one, they left the choir. I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. Quack, quack, I'm a duck. Quack, 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 quack. I'm a duck. Quack, quack, <coughs> um, quack, Doris. Quack, quack, quack. What? They've all gone. Good. But... They were awful singers anyway. And so are you. Goodbye. I'm a duck. <laughs> I've lost all my friends. Their singing wasn't that bad. If I'd not lost my temper, we could have all sung my song. <laughs> and that would have been really nice. <laughs> Don't cry, Doris. We've decided to have another go. You have? It's such a good song. That we'd like to sing it with you. But we have to wait till dawn, of course. And we've had a couple of new ideas for the arrangement. So everyone went to sleep in the volcano, and when the sun rose, Nelson invited Doris to conduct the animals again. I'm a bird. Tweet, 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 tweet. I'm a rhino. Bash, 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 bash. I'm a giraffe. La 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 la. I'm a zebra. Tappity tap, tappity tap, tappity tap. I'm an elephant. Toot, 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 toot. And Doris. She's a dog. She's a doll. She's a doll. She's a doll. Hello, everyone. Hello, Lucy. I baked you a great big. Are you all right, Lucy? Yes, thanks, Boris. I'm okay. But I don't think my cake is. I thought so. It's all broken. There, there. Never mind, Lucy. It was the best cake I'd ever made. Mm. It still tastes yummy. Mm. You're eating my cake? It still tastes good. Try some. It doesn't matter what it looks like. It's what's inside that counts. That reminds me of the story of Isabel the Flamingo. Please tell us, Georgina. Isabel the Flamingo was the most stylish creature in the whole of Africa. That's right, girls. Put your beaks up, push your feathers out, and smile. Excelente. Now, standing on one leg. Thank you. No, left leg, Mirabel. And hold. Perfecto. If Isabel used a new word, all the animals in Africa would start to use it too. Perfecto. That's a funny word. What does it mean? It means perfect. The best. Tops. You know, like a muddy watermelon. Oh, yeah. Oh, Paulina, would you be a dear and go and fish over at the other side of the lake? 
Okay. Ah, Isabel was so cool that everyone copied everything she did. <laughs> Look out. Here comes Isabel. You ask her, Zed. I'm so sorry, Zed, but I can't understand a thing you are saying. Sorry. I said it's a lovely day. Perfecto. <gasps> yes, Zed, it is. Well, do you want to ask me something? We're having a party tonight. Watermelon, mogo chips. And, well, we were wondering if you'd like to come. Well, uh, I'm really busy, but, um, oh, yes, I'll come. Yes! yes. She, she said, said yes! Hi, Pauline. Uh, coming to the party tonight? Well, I, um, uh, well, I've got nothing to wear. Oh, come on, Pauline, we can have a laugh. Oh, all right, then, I'll see you later. Pauline the Pelican wanted to make herself pretty for the party at Water Lily Lake. Hello, Pauline. Annabelle, Mirabelle, I was just getting ready for the party. You are going to the party? With that baggy beak and those dirty feet. Oh. <laughs> 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 Isabel, I was wondering if you could give me uh, a makeover like. Oh. You've got style, you've got grace, not a feather out of place. I could learn a lot from you. You've got style, you're so chic, from your feet up to your beak. I could learn a lot from you. What I can do. Okay, Pauline, I give you a flamingo makeover. First, we get rid of all the horrible dust and make you nice and pink. Isabel gave Pauline a luxurious pink mud bath. She taught Pauline how to walk elegantly. <laughs> oh, hello, Pauline. You look nice. It is wonderful to be here. Although, between you and me, all this standing on one leg is really very boring. What are you doing? I'm taking these watermelons to the party. Perfecto. They're a bit heavy. I don't suppose any of you girls could give me a hand. No, it does. I'll give you a hand. Thanks, Pauline. No problem. Are those flowers for the party, Nelson? Yes, Pauline. They'll look lovely if I can keep them all fresh. I'll get you some more water. There you go, Nelson. Now your flowers will look nice and fresh for the party. Thanks, Pauline. That's a real help. Um, I think you've got a little bit of mud on your beak. Oh, never mind. It'll soon wash off. Where do you want it? Over there. Thanks so much for helping me, Pauline. Oh, no trouble at all. We'll soon have this lot moved. What a mess. You can't go to a party looking like that. We help you to look pretty, and this is what you do. Oh, it's so annoying. Party time. Oh. 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 Ready, girls? Feathers fluffy, big, high. Oh, 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 o
You're here. Great to see you. Come and sit down next to us. <laughs> Why are they all talking into a Pauline? She's clumsy and dirty. She has no manners whatsoever. And we flamingos have such a style. But Pauline is kind and helpful and honest. That's why everyone loves her. Everyone wants to talk to Pauline because she has helped to make the party a success. When the flamingos understood that true beauty comes from within, they realized that they could learn a lot from Pauline. You're so kind and so sweet. You've got such a useful beak. We could learn a lot from you. We understand you're so grand, cause you lend a helping hand. We could learn a lot from you. got so many friends that I can learn a lot from too. We could learn a lot from you. We could learn a lot from you. Good evening, Mom, and welcome. How can we help you? I've come for my bedtime story. Excellent. Please sit down and make yourself comfortable. Can we tempt you to a shiny green apple? Oh, thanks. Or a yellow banana? I don't understand. You don't understand what, milady? I don't understand why we're all having to be so polite. We're practicing our good manners. Ready for tonight's story. My lords, ladies, animals, birds and insects, please be seated for the story of Doris, princess of the Zambam River. Told by Molly the Hippopotamus. Ahem. Shh. Doris the Duck, Toby the Tortoise, and Kevin the Crocodile were best friends. They did everything together. Each morning, they would meet on the banks of the Zambam River and splash in the mud pool. <laughs> <laughs> that was fun. What shall we do now? Let's play Silly Faces. Oh, I can do better than that. Your turn, Toby. <laughs> Doris, Toby and Kevin enjoyed playing games together. <laughs> that was fun. What should we do now? Let's pretend to be someone else. I'll be a pirate looking for treasure. Where's Kevin? I'm over here. I'm a top secret spy. Who are you going to be, Doris? Doris? I'm a princess. <laughs> <laughs> Doris, a princess? princess. <laughs> Princess of the Bam Bam River. Kevin, you can collect some pretty lotus flowers for me. <laughs> what? I'm a princess and you've got to do everything I say. But... Yes? Uh, yes, your royal duckness. And you, Toby, you can fetch me some nice things to eat. Some grapes and a great big pile of yum yum fruit. Certainly, your royal duckness. Oh, 
good enough. Me too. Let's play hide and seek. I'm sorry. Are you talking to me? Yes, Doris. Then please address me as your royal duckness from now on. Can we stop playing this game now? Your royal duckness? Game? What game? I am a duck princess. I am, I am. But? but... No bucks. Go and get me some more pretty things. Toby and Kevin hadn't gone far when they saw Audrey the ostrich. Hello, boys. My, my, you are looking tired. We've been playing Let's Pretend, and Doris has decided she's a princess. She's treating us like servants, and we don't know how to stop the game. Hmm. Now, let me see. A princess, eh? Now, listen carefully. I think... Toby and Kevin got to work. Good afternoon, your duckness. Before you say anything more, I'm still a princess We and... know. You do? Yes, your royal duckness. And to prove it, we've made a crown for your royal head. And a throne for your royal bottom. You have? Oh, where are they? Let's go and see them. Let's go now. You're a princess. You can't walk there. Please allow me to give you a ride on my back. For the rest of the day, Doris was treated like a true princess. Morning, Your Majesty. I brought you a ladder so that you can climb onto your throne. A morning, Your Ducksomeness. I bring you Warthog Treasure. Oh, thank you, my loyal Herbert. I'll eat it later. Your Majesty, we bring you palm leaf fans to keep you cool. But after a while, being a princess got boring. Toby taught us. Yes, your duckness. Bring me a double twig burger with tomato relish and a triple helping of mogo chips. Sorry, your royal duckness, but you can't have any. What? A Zambam princess must only eat the finest of food. Oh! Oh, yes, of course. Uh, the yum yum fruit. Then Kevin and Toby decided to play a game of silly faces. Here's a good one. Look! <laughs> <laughs> What about this one? Here, guys. <laughs> Look at me. Oh, sorry, your duckness. You are not allowed to join in. Being a princess is a serious matter. Oh, yes, of course. Does your majesty require anything else? Uh, no, thank you. In that case, Toby and I will go for a wallow in the mud pool. Can I come? Oh, sorry, your royal duckness. Wallowing in the mud is not something princesses do. Doris could stand it no longer. She loved splashing in the mud pool. I'm not a princess anymore. I'm just plain old Doris the duck who wants to play with her friends. <laughs> <laughs> Thank goodness for that! So, what are we waiting for? Done. That 
was a great pirouette. Thanks, Molly. I've just had my first dance lesson. Hmm. I need a partner. Come on, Boris. Oh, dear me. Uh, no, I don't think I can, Lucy. Of course you can. <laughs> <laughs> was right, Lucy. This reminds me of my first ballet lesson. You? Ballet? Don't look so surprised. My best friend Natalie taught me to dance. I remember. And you became quite a good dancer. In your own special way. Molly and Natalie used to love dancing together across the savannah. Watch this, Molly. Natalie was as graceful and elegant as a ballerina. Wait for me, Natalie. But Molly wasn't. Oh! Oh, ouch! Oh! 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 Ouch! Oh! 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 Ah! Oh, I wish I was as good a dancer as you, Natalie. Well, at least you're trying, and that's half the fun. Natalie didn't mind that Molly wasn't as good a dancer as her. As long as they were having fun, nothing else mattered. Then, one day, I saw them dancing together. Have you heard the news, girls? There's going to be a dance competition by the river tomorrow. Really? Oh, Georgina, I love competitions. Well, you can enter this one if you have a dance partner. We could do it together. Me and you, partners, I'd love to, Natalie. Come on, we've got to start practicing straight away. Now, just watch what I do and copy me. One, two, three. One, two, three. OK. One, two, three. One. No, 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 Molly. You must step lightly. See? One, two, three. One, two, three. Sorry, Natalie. I'll try again. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. Oh! One. Please, girls, keep the noise down. Sorry, Audrey. I'll never win a dance competition with you as my partner. I've got to find somebody else. Molly couldn't believe it when Natalie left her to find a new partner because winning the competition was now more important to Natalie than their friendship. But it wasn't easy finding a new partner. Too small. Too big. Then she saw Doris the Duck. Doris, would you like to dance with me in the competition tomorrow? Who, me? Oh, I'd love to, Natalie. Quack, 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 quack. Must you flap and quack while you're dancing? This is how I like to dance. It's fun. Well, if that's the case, then I can't dance with you. Oh, suit yourself. So Natalie went off in search of another dance partner. Herbert the Warthog was the most musical animal on the savannah. Herbert, would you like to dance with me in the competition tomorrow? Who, me? Uh, with you? <laughs> well, I'd be honoured. <laughs> Herbert, you're getting dirt all over me. What do you expect? I am a warthog. If that's the case, then I can't dance with you. Well, I never. The cheek of it. And so Natalie went off in search of another dance partner. Then she saw me. She'd make the perfect partner. Georgina? Please, would you dance with me in the competition tomorrow? Well, what happened to Molly? I thought she was your partner. 
Oh, she's too heavy and clumsy. I'd never win the competition with her as my partner. Well, Natalie, I'd never win with you as my partner. You're far too short. Oh. Well, I never. How could she not want to dance with me? Everybody else does. Natalie didn't understand why I didn't want to dance with her. But then she realised. Oh, I see. She sees me like I see Molly. I'm not good enough for her. Molly! Natalie was amazed to see Molly dancing so beautifully under the water. Her weight didn't matter down there. My gosh! Molly's a great dancer down there. Oh, Molly, I'm so sorry I left you. I wish you told me you could dance so well underwater. What does it matter? I still can't dance with you on land. You don't have to, but we can still be partners. Finally, it was the day of the dance competition. Ribbit! OK, OK, time to begin. Bring on the first contestants. And so, the competition began with the first dancers, Isabel the Flamingo and Seamus the Stork. Oh, dear. They're very good. Good, but not great like you and me. Next, giggles and tickles. <laughs> Don't worry, this competition is about dancing, not comedy. <laughs> Come on, we're on! At last, it was Natalie and Molly's turn to dance. Everyone could see Natalie dancing along the riverbank, but they had to look underwater to see Molly. <laughs> it was now time for the three frogs to announce the winners. <laughs> OK, OK. Best dance goes to Isabel and Seamus. <laughs> Natalie and Molly were crushed. They'd lost the competition. Hang on. We couldn't make just one decision, so there's more than one prize. For the silliest dance in the world, Giggles and Tickles win hands down. <laughs> and for the most unusual dance ever, Molly and Natalie. <laughs> so, Natalie... Like what? <laughs> well, like a party or something. What sort of a party? Well, how about a birthday party? You know, with balloons and presents. <laughs> that would be great fun. <laughs> but to have a birthday party... It has to be someone's birthday. Exactly. It's a pity we don't know anyone whose birthday it is, isn't it? Well, actually... Yes? Well, actually, it's my birthday today. Oh! oh. Is it really? It had completely slipped my mind. And they say an elephant never forgets. How foolish of us to forget. So, there's no party then? No, not today. Sorry. Never mind. 
You'll have another birthday next year. Yes, I suppose I will. Surprise! <laughs> 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 now then, how about a special birthday story? I know. I'll tell you the one about Herbert's party. Oh, yes! Herbert was a very busy warthog. Every morning you'd get up, have a bath, dry himself down, then he'd make some breakfast. <laughs> and go for a long walk with his best friends, the flies. Now, Herbert would be the first to admit that he wasn't the tidiest of animals. In fact, his appearance was a bit of a joke on the savannah, but everyone loved him. Morning, Herbert. Nice day for the flies. Hello, Herbert. Grown any nice warts lately? <laughs> One day, Herbert was wallowing in the mud when he heard excited voices making plans for a party. It's going to be great fun. Lots of music and dancing. <laughs> Keep still! <laughs> Your new stripes look great! Quiet, it's a secret. We don't want old Dusty Bottom to find out. I can't wait! Hi, girls. Gosh, you look great. Oh, hi, Herbert. Oh, would you mind standing down wind? Sorry? The smell. The flies. Oh, yes. I'm sorry. Of course. Clear off, you lot. Go on, buzz off! Mm. You're both looking very glamorous today. <laughs> um, going somewhere nice? Do you think this pink really suits me? Can I come? Do I look too big in these eyelashes? Well, can I? Oh, sorry, Herbert. We can't gossip all day. We've got things to do. Oh, yes. Right, of course. Herbert wondered why everyone was ignoring him. They're going to a party and I'm not invited. Hmm. Huh. I suppose I do look a bit of a mess. Time for a warthog makeover. Herbert had a long, luxurious pink bath. Pink mud for the best-smelling warthog at the party. Then he went for a haircut. La 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 la. Oh, Herbert, keep still. Ouch! Oops, sorry. La 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 la. Nearly there. Yeah. What about that? Wow, groovy. The other animals were getting ready for the party too. No sign of Herbert. Let's start the party preparations without him. Anybody there? Nelson? Zed? Molly? They're not here. Music? <gasps> and it's coming from my place. Pizza, 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 pizza. La 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 Hey, it's my birthday today. 
It's my party. So that's what all the fuss was about. Surprise, surprise. Hey, guys, let's party. Who are you? Why, I'm Herbert, of course. Oh. You're not Herbert. Oh, yes, I am. Oh, oh no, no, you're, you're not. not. Right. Herbert's smelly and dusty. And itchy and funny and friendly. You're much too smart and quite grumpy. Where's Herbert? What have you done with him? Oh, dear me. Get him! Wait, wait, stop! I am Herbert. Look! Nelson, old pal, old buddy. Oh. Let me have it. Oh, no! Well, you do look a bit like Herbert, but I'm still not sure. <laughs> What about this? Mm, there's still something missing. I know! <laughs> it is Herbert! We didn't think it was you. You know, without the smell and the dust. And the flies. Will you forgive us, Herbert? Well... OK. Hooray! Hooray! Wait. On one condition. Yes? Yes. Well, 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 we'll, we'll do anything, 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 anything at all. Yeah. I forgive you if you... Yes, 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 yes. yes. If you all have a mud bath. A, a mud, mud bath. bath? It's my birthday. I'm a warthog, so you've got to do things the warthog way. <laughs> <laughs> Herbert had the best party ever. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Molly. Hi, Nelson. Hi, Giggles. Hi, Chickles. Hi, Georgina. Hi, Boris. I would like to tell a story tonight. Oh, your stories are boring. It's our turn tonight. Yeah, we know lots of stories. Scary stories. Exciting stories. Funny stories. Surely it's my turn tonight. No, mine. But, but you, you told, told a story, story yesterday. yesterday. That's not fair. Stop it. That's enough. I think tonight it's Boris's turn to tell me a story. What? Me? But I don't know any stories. I'm a bear of few words. You see? He's useless at telling stories. No, he's not. He's just shy. Come on, Boris, tell us a story. Well, uh, I suppose I could tell you the story of Snowbird. Snowbird? That's a funny name. Is he a bear, like you? Well, yes and no. He's a bear, but not a bear like me. Snowbird is a big, white, polar bear. Snowbird lived just around the corner from the North Pole, in a house he built of snow. <sighs> what shall we do today, Snowbird? Uh, we could play a game of dominoes. Good idea. Because he lived on his own, Snowbird often talked to himself. Hey, your turn, Snowbird. I've won again. Better luck next time, eh, Snowbird? Snowbird was also a sculptor. He was very proud of all the snow sculptures he'd made, but sometimes he wished he had a friend to show them to. One morning, Snowbird decided to go fishing. Hi, 
I've had enough fish for a week. How about you, Snowbird? So have I. Huh? Huh? Oh, wrong hole, sorry. Please don't go. But you're a polar bear. <laughs> You'll eat me. I won't eat you. I'm a fishetarian. You? A fishetarian? It means I only eat fish. Fish for breakfast, fish for lunch, and fish for dinner. Oh, yes. And fish for that tasty snack that keeps you going between mealtimes. You're not a fish, are you? Uh, of course not. I'm a seal. Sydney the seal. My name is Snowbird. Will you be my friend? Okay. Shall we play a game? I've got some dominoes. Yeah! I have the double fish. That's not how seals play dominoes. I'll show you how it's done. Why are you putting all those dominoes in a row, Sydney? You'll see. Ready? Her, her, go! Yippee! Uh, uh, that was fun. Now, let's play dominoes the snowbird way. Uh, uh. And so they did. They played dominoes all day. And when the sun set, Sydney had to go home. But he promised to come back the next morning. Bye. Uh, uh. I think I have a friend. Yes. I think you're right. Now, you won't have to talk to yourself anymore. The next morning, Snowbird took Sydney to see his snow sculptures. Wow! These are great! <laughs> you're a real artist! Oh, it's easy, really. I have an idea. Stay here. Hurry up. I can't stay still much longer. Almost finished. Ready! <laughs> I haven't got a big tummy like that. Yes, you have. <laughs> now let's have some fun. Yeah. Sydney. Always. Promise. Promise. But one cold winter morning. <laughs> the hole had disappeared. It was frozen. Sydney. Sydney. find Sydney anywhere. And Sydney couldn't find Snowbird anywhere. I wonder if I will ever see Sydney again. He promised we'd always be friends. You're talking to yourself again. Sorry. It was midwinter and the days were as dark as the nights. Snowbird waited for the sun to rise. He waited and waited and waited, and then he fell asleep. 
Snowbird woke up on a warm spring morning. Oh, the hole in the ice was back. Only now, it was a lot bigger. Hey, hey. Sydney, I thought I would never see you again. But I promised I'll be back. Hey, hey. And I always keep my promises. Oh, Sydney, I'm so happy to see you. I'm happy to see you too. Hey, hey. Look, I brought some friends to play. Hey, 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 hey. And that's exactly what they did. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Hi, Lucy. Shh. I heard something. Listen. Stupid, cutesy animals. Always trying to be sweet and fluffy. Nibbling peanuts and smiling. Huh? Hello. What's your name? I'm Victor. Victor the Crocodile. Having a nice party, are we? Tell me. How come I never get invited to these little get-togethers? Because you're mean. And nasty. I'm a crocodile, you nitwits. I'm supposed to be mean and nasty. Are all crocodiles like you? Sure. All proper crocodiles are maliciously mean and nauseatingly nasty. Except Kevin, of course. But then, he's not a real crocodile. What do you mean? Kevin's just a softy, about as scary as a cucumber. Definitely not a proper crocodile. I want you to tell me all about him. And why should I do that? Because you can only join our party if you tell me a story. That's the rule. Isn't that so? That's right. Yeah, yeah. Come on, Nick. All right, then. I'll tell you a story. Yeah. But don't expect any happy endings. One day I was floating around in the river, having fun. You know, bullying butterflies, terrorizing tiny tadpoles. <laughs> anyway, like I said, I was floating around in the river, and then I saw this little crocodile. So, what should we play today? Hide and see. Okay, I'll count to ten. One, two, three, four, oh, five, uh, oh, six, oh, oh, seven, uh, eight, uh, nine, uh, ten. I'm coming, ready or not. Can't you try a little harder, Toby? But I ran as fast as I could. The little croc was hiding in the reeds. It was time for me to make my move. Hey, psst. Yes, you. What's your name? I'm Kevin. Kevin the Crocodile. You call yourself a crocodile? Don't make me laugh. But I am a crocodile. Listen, Sally. If you're a crocodile, how come you're playing with a duck and a tortoise? They're my friends. See? I knew you weren't a real crocodile. Want to learn how to be a real crocodile? Uh-huh. Follow me, then. But what about Doris and Toby? Kevin! Forget them. You're with me now. Kevin! I thought it was time for Kevin to have some crocodile lessons. First lesson. Real crocodiles are mean and nasty. Let's start with the eyes. I'll show you. Victor? Now it's your turn, Kevin. 
Not bad, not bad. Now go and scare a small, helpless animal. Like what? Oh, a duck, for example. Or a tortoise. But... No buts. You want to be a real crocodile, right? Uh-huh. Off you go, then. Kevin. Oh, I get it. We're playing funny faces, right? I can do better than that. <laughs> your turn, Toby. Oh, you're supposed to be scared of me. But you're our friend. Why should we be scared of you? I'm a crocodile, silly. That's why. Don't call Toby silly. Hey, where are you going? I'm going to see Victor. He's a real crocodile and my best friend. Kevin, come back. Kevin! Kevin still had a lot to learn. I decided to teach him lesson number two. The grin. The what? The grin. Watch this. <laughs> Show them all those big white choppers. Oh. Great grin, crocodile. Go for it. Your turn, Toby. Oh. Huh? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> hey, wait a minute. This isn't funny. I'm a crocodile and I'm mean and nasty. No, you're not. You're cute and <laughs> funny. <laughs> and you, you're just a stupid duck. Oh, is that so? Suit yourself, Mr. Croc. Oh, Dial. Let's go, Toby. Kevin wasn't very good at learning, but I decided to give him another chance. Maybe it's time I taught you some tail splashing. Watch this. Wow! I want to try that too. Remember, Kevin, mean and nasty. I'm a crook and I'm mean and nasty, mean and nasty, mean and nasty. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is back to dream. I'm a crook and I'm mean and nasty, mean and nasty, mean and nasty. Row, row, row your boat gently down the stream. Merrily, 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 life is back to dream. Mean and nasty, mean and nasty. Okay, let's see who can make the biggest splash. Ouch! Oh, I didn't mean to hurt you, Kevin. I'm sorry, Kevin. That's when I realised normal lessons didn't work for Kevin. I would have to show him myself. You're not really going to hurt anyone, are you, Victor? Oh, look. There's Kevin and he's brought his big brother. I'm really scared now. Hang on a minute, Speedy. I want a word with you. Let Toby go, you horrible brute! Ooh. Help! Kevin! Help! Ah. Now look here! What are you playing at? Just be my friendly self from now on. What do you think? Yeah. Let's play hide and seek. I'll count to ten. Well, maybe we should let Toby count because he can't run very fast. Good idea. One, two, three. That's enough, Toby. You can come and look for us now. Okay. Uh, 